Health is a term that can mean many things and can be used in a large variety of ways. In health and physical education, this specialized term does not merely refer to the absence of disease, but incorporates the physical, social emotional, mental, and spiritual wellness of an individual, group, or population. Health, therefore, is concerned with a state of total well-being, and being healthy is not simply about how an individual feels physically, such as feeling ill or run down. Being healthy is a broader concept incorporating the body, the mind, and spirit. There are many factors that affect an individual's health and well-being, and to help understand these factors, they can be categorized into different health dimensions. A dimension is simply an aspect or feature of a larger concept. And although the names and numbers of these dimensions may differ slightly depending on your research, in health and physical education, we'll be investigating six dimensions of health. The six dimensions of health are physical, emotional, intellectual, social, spiritual, and environmental. Each dimension of health incorporates many factors that can negatively or positively affect health. And each can be analyzed looking for ways a person might improve their all round health and well being. The six dimensions of health are also interdependent. This means that each dimension affects the others. All round health is attained only when all dimensions of health are sufficient and balanced. A healthy individual may experience a sense of wholeness and fulfillment in their lives. People who can gain and maintain optimal all round health are much more likely to live long, happy and productive lives. The physical health dimension includes factors that affect the body's functioning and ability to undertake and successfully complete daily physical tasks. This dimension incorporates elements such as growth and physical maturation, physical features and complexion, fitness levels and fatigue, diet and nutrition, and any disease or medical conditions that may affect the normal functioning of body systems. Optimal physical health allows for a more active life with a reduced chance of illness. It increases life expectancy and decreases the risk of developing lifestyle diseases that can diminish quality of life. Some tips to help optimize physical health include accumulating at least 60 minutes of moderate physical activity across each day. Finding an uninterrupted 9 to 11 hours of sleep each night to allow the body to recover and recharge. Drink plenty of water to remain hydrated and enjoy a wide variety of nutritious foods from the five food groups. Emotional health is about a person's mood and general emotional state. It incorporates self-esteem and is concerned with recognizing and expressing feelings adequately, as well as the ability to control emotions to maintain a realistic perspective on situations. Emotional health also includes the ability to read the emotion of others and the capacity to offer emotional support and empathy. Emotional health is about developing emotional intelligence. The emotional health dimension explores factors such as mood and disposition, self-esteem, confidence and resilience, personal drive and inspiration, reading emotions and empathy, emotive reactions and coping with life events, the causes of anxiety and depression, and the ability to show yourself compassion. Optimal emotional health allows for a more level-headed approach to life with the ability to remain calm and be less reactive to situations. It enables people to limit stress, process complex and highly charged emotional events, and combat anxiety and depression. Optimal emotional health generally results in a happier life, which is more fulfilling and optimistic. 
Some tips to help optimize your emotional health include learning to recognize your emotions and emotional triggers, creating a positive support network with those in your life and sharing your thoughts with them. Remember, a problem shared is a problem halved. And find purpose and meaning. Figure out what's important in your life and use that as a focus through tougher times. The intellectual health dimension includes factors that affect the ability to think, learn, reason, make decisions and display logic. This dimension is about gaining the necessary knowledge and cognitive skills that are appropriate for your situation and stage of life and will allow for purposeful and informed decisions that enhance your day-to-day -day existence. This dimension incorporates elements such as lifelong learning, growth and fixed mindsets, problem solving and logical decision making, challenging convention, change and developing new ideas, and any health conditions that hinder the brain's ability to think. Any activity that provides mental stimulation will help to optimize intellectual health. Such activities include challenging yourself to learn new things and trying new experiences, being open to and evaluating new ideas and concepts, engaging with puzzles or hobbies, as well as having conversations and debates with others. Your brain is like a muscle. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. The social dimension of health refers to the ability to make and maintain meaningful relationships with others. Good social health includes not only having relationships, but behaving appropriately within them and maintaining socially acceptable standards. It allows us to work with others in any situation to benefit all in the relationship. The social dimension incorporates health elements such as family, personal and working relationships, building support networks, advancing communication skills, your relational behaviors, including rights and responsibilities, socially acceptable behaviors and manners, teamwork, leadership and subservience, and receiving and seeking feedback. Optimal social health develops a sense of belonging and acceptance. It brings comfort and counteracts the feelings of isolation and loneliness. Social health allows us to feel part of a broader group or community and therefore helps us to give greater meaning and purpose to our lives. Some tips to help optimize social health include putting yourself out there. Seek new social situations to make new friends, but continue to make time for the old ones. Be active in your community. Look for ways to contribute, help others or volunteer and avoid the negative Learn to identify and remove the negative people from your life, those that bring you down or negatively influence your behaviours. The spiritual health dimension includes factors relating to the values, attitudes and beliefs of the individual. Traditionally, these aspects may have developed to align with a religious denomination or faith system. But now our values, attitudes and beliefs are more typically shaped by family, peers and the expectation of the local community or culture in which we live. However they develop, what is valued and the beliefs held by an individual will give their life purpose and govern their behaviours. The spiritual dimension incorporates elements such as appropriate values, attitudes and beliefs, moral and ethical development your purpose in life or life direction, and your faith or commitment to beliefs. Optimal spiritual health will allow for sensible decision making and behaviours, and interactions based on a well set moral compass. It will aid in giving life a purpose, which in turn helps to achieve goals, to maintain a proper perspective on life and overcome adversity. To help optimise spiritual health, broaden and maintain your social links. Seeking advice and observing a broad range of people allows you to evaluate and adjust your own values and beliefs. Identifying and utilizing worthy role models and mentors will help develop good morals to demonstrate integrity and ethical behaviors. Be engaged in community and culture. Be aware of social issues such as inequity, injustice and prejudice. Develop a point of view or course of actions about these issues take an interest in your heritage and cultural background. 
and display mindfulness. Be present and engaged with those around you and day-to-day -day life. Show concern and compassion and focus on what is important in the here and now for you. The environmental health dimension includes factors that affect health as a result of the external situation and circumstances in which the individual finds themselves. This dimension incorporates a range of factors including the physical environment of the individual, do they live in a rural or suburban area with available green space or natural areas free from pollution, or are they residing in high density housing in an urban location? The home environment. What is the makeup of the family, extended family and living situation? And what are their attitudes towards health and well-being? Financial conditions. Does the individual have access to money for life's essentials? Do they have disposable income for leisure and health activities? Access to health resources. Does the individual live close to adequate health services and can they access these? Not just hospitals, but access to first responders and council and community services and resources. And the work or school environment. Is this a flexible environment that allows for personal needs, changing life circumstances and financial requirements? Does the environment encourage learning and personal growth and provide a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment? As environmental health relates to how external factors affect health, it can be difficult to maximize this health dimension without significant life changes. For example, moving house, relocating to a different region or changing careers. As a result, it can be difficult to influence the health dimension for children who may have little or no control over these factors. Some tips to help optimize environmental health include making use of the green spaces available to you. Getting in touch with nature provides many positive health benefits. Assist to keep Australia beautiful. Be an advocate for your local environment to ensure green space is retained and is free of pollution. Be aware and utilize your local healthcare facilities so that they are retained as essential services for everyone. Help to maintain a safe school or work environment by following guidelines and meeting expectations. And develop financial literacy to maximise the financial resources that you receive. The six health dimensions are all interdependent, meaning that they affect one another. It is important to maintain a healthy balance between all six dimensions in order to achieve all-round health and total well-being. If one dimension takes over and dominates life, or is compromised and not working efficiently, then a person's overall health and well-being will be compromised and the other dimensions will decline. For example, consider a person whose physical health declines as they get the flu. Social health often declines also as they are isolated from others and don't often feel like going out. During this time, they struggle to focus on study or learning anything new, and so intellectual health is hindered. Being physically unwell and the sense of isolation may leave them feeling sad, and this relates to their emotional health. During this time, they may also be a little self-centered and lack empathy for others, which relates to their spiritual health. Whilst having the flu, they may need to see the family doctor and be provided with compassion from those in the home environment. Both are factors associated with the environmental health dimension. Health is a broad concept with many aspects influencing our well-being. Through using the dimensions of health to help identify elements affecting our wellness, we can work to limit factors that negatively affect health and maximize those behaviors that affect health positively in the pursuit of reaching total well-being.